One of the value props of Fabric All Up is how integrated all the different services are together. Learn how SQL Database in Fabric is no exception to this, this week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, I'm joined by Dave Levi. Thanks so much for joining us today, Dave. Hi, thanks for having me. It's great to have you on the show. And Dave is a uh, product manager on the SQL team, uh, focusing a lot these days on SQL database and Fabric. Uh, but I'll, I'll let you talk, Dave. Tell us a little bit about what you do. Sure. So, yeah, I've been focusing a lot on Fabric, specifically uh, integrations. So everywhere where Fabric SQL touches the rest of Fabric. Um, you know, with Fabric, it's really the story there is an integrated platform. So there's a ton of integrations that we have to do to make sure we really like weave into everything else that's already out there. Okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah. And I know there's a lot that we're doing and a lot that we're planning to do. Um, what are some of the kind of top of mind integrations that, that come to you today? So some of my favorites are like data flows. Um, I've got a cool demo. I'm excited to show you like being able to take JSON data and use data flows to put that into a SQL database and then use Power BI to show uh, actually, we're going to show all of the Azure regions on a map is a really cool scenario, it's something I've always struggled to be able to do. And now it's like super easy. It took me like 20 minutes to do it. Very okay, exciting. awesome. Cool. Well, it seems like you have a lot planned to show us. So maybe we'll just jump right into the demo. You want to do that? Sure, let's do that. Here we are in our brand new Contoso Apps workspace. As you can see, we don't have any items in it. We're going to click new item. And we're going to create a SQL database. We'll click SQL database and we'll give it a name. We're going to call this database Contoso Sales Database. Create. Now our database is creating. Now, what's happening here is we're creating not just a database, but also a default semantic model and a SQL analytics endpoint to allow us to read data directly from the one late copy. Okay, we're in our database. Let's click on sample data to get some sample data loaded. What we can also do is we can go up to the get data menu and we can say new data flow gen two, and we can use that to load some data in here too. Now that we're in our data flow, we're going to need some data to add. Let's pull up a command window. Here we're going to use an AZ command, AZ account list locations, and we're going to pipe that to a file uh, in JSON format. There we go. Let's look in the file. Here's our JSON file. And it has a list of all of our Azure locations. Most importantly, it has the latitude and longitude of each. So now let's work on creating our data flow. We're going to click Get Data, and then we're going to drag our JSON file in and drop it in the Upload File area. Just take a second to read in the file. There we go. Let's click next. Now that our data is loaded into our data flow, we can see here in the Power Query view that we've got all of our, our data read in and we can start to get it in a format that we like. What we'll do first is select the columns that we'd like to keep. Once we have the columns that we'd like to keep selected, 
we're going to right click and select remove other columns. All right, now we've got it down to just the data that we want. Now we need to change the format of the latitude and longitude to be just simple text. There we go. Next up, we need to rename our query. And because we're accepting all the defaults, renaming our query means that we're setting the table name that the data is going to be inserted into. Here you can see that all of the destination information has already been filled in because we use the get data menu in the SQL database to create our new data flow. Okay, let's name our data flow. And now we can publish it. We're back in our workspace. Let's go back into our database. You can see our data flow is finished successfully now too. Let's go look at our DBO schema. Let's look at tables. Looks like we have to refresh. So we'll refresh real quick here. And there it is, location. So let's click on that. This automatically selects the top 1,000 rows. Next, let's go look at the sample data that we loaded. We'll go down here to Sales LT. We'll expand Tables. Let's just click on Address. We can see that our sample data all loaded successfully. So let's go see if it's replicated to one lake. We're going to click the Replication tab at the top and then Monitor Replication. Here we can see a list of our tables as well as their replication status. We can see all of our sample data plus the locations table that we just loaded are all replicated to one lake. Let's flip over to the SQL Analytics endpoint. We're going to click the menu up here in the corner, select SQL Analytics endpoint. And here we are. It's a data warehouse based view, but basically the same thing. So we're going to expand schemas. Let's expand DBO and tables. There's our locations table. We'll click on that. There's all our location data. Let's go down to sales LT and tables again. Let's look at address again. Here's our data. So let's say we wanted to work with this data in a notebook. What we can do here is we can say new SQL query and new SQL query in notebook. And it create a notebook for us. We'll skip the tour for now. And you can see it's a very similar experience. So we can click on locations. We can say select top 100. And it's automatically going to put the code into a cell for us that we can then run. Okay, perfect. 
next, let's go back to our SQL Analytics endpoint. Let's go to the top and click the Reporting tab, and we're going to click New Report. All the tables are fine, so let's go ahead and click Continue. Okay, here we are in our new report. Let's go ahead and add a map to it. Now we need that locations table we created earlier. And we'll pull the latitude and longitude into our report. Okay, now that we've got all our locations plotted, let's make the map bigger so it's easier to see. Okay, perfect. Next, let's go back to our database. And it's probably a good idea to save our report, so we'll hit save. Give it a name here real quick. And we'll hit save. And here we have our finished report. Now, I'm super excited about this because this is something I'd always wanted to do ever since I saw this map first demoed. I could never get it to work. Now with Fabric, I was able to do it in 20 minutes. Let's get back to our workspace. So we've been building a lot of stuff and it's probably time we did some documentation. We're gonna select a new task flow. As you can see, we've got a lot of choices. We're just gonna use the basic data analytics. Okay, we've got our new task flow. Let's work left to right. So we'll start with collect data. We'll click the paperclip. And we're gonna say load locations for collect data. So we'll check that. We'll click collect. Now we see we've got the collect data tag next to our load locations. Let's do store data now. And we can select our database. Okay, let's go to create visualizations. Now here we could say new item and just create a brand new report. Um, we don't need to do that, so we'll close out of here. Let's do attach and we'll attach the report we just did. And then finally, we've got some flexibility. If we don't have a track data step, we can just delete this. There we go, all gone. So now if we click on each of the items, we can filter to just the artifacts that we're interested in. And then finally to remove the filter, we just click anywhere in the white space and it'll show all items again. Let's head back to our database. Here we're gonna use some of our sample data to create a new GraphQL API. So we're gonna click on address and create API for GraphQL. We'll give it a name. We'll click create. Okay, our table's already selected. We can click load.
And here we are in the GraphQL editor. We're going to type our query here. While holding down the control key, I press the space bar to engage the IntelliSense. Let's do a little formatting here. OK, and then we'll do control plus space bar again. Now we'll pick addresses and then items. And we'll just pick a few columns. All right, let's run our query. And there's our data. So as we scroll through here, we can see that we've got all the same data that we saw over in the database window. Now this is cool, but how do I make this work in my applications? Well, here at the top, if we click on generate code, there's sample code in either Python or Node.js that you can copy and paste into your own application and use it as your own. All right, let's head back to the workspace. Just take a look at all we were able to get done. Because everything in Fabric is integrated, you can take days of work and do it in a few minutes. Wow, that was a lot. And it seems like you're able to do it so easily. Like, I feel like I could go in and do it just myself. Um, so thanks for sharing that with us. I'm sure viewers learned a lot. And I know I did as well. Uh, one question for you that I have, and I'm sure others are thinking about as well, is when you think about roadmap or like things people are asking for or things we want to do next, uh, is there anything you could share? Yeah. Um, you know, we get a lot, lots and lots of questions about notebooks. Um, we do have notebook support going against the analytics endpoint, but that's read only. Um, there is a workaround you can do with code to, you know, update your SQL database live. But we're actually working with the team to um, fix on a timeline to have full support for writing to SQL database within notebooks. Um, we're also looking to finish off the rest of the operators and data pipelines. And we've got some really cool work that we're doing with the RTI team, looking at how we can have real-time events both going into and coming out of SQL database. So that should be really exciting. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. So I guess the, the takeaway for folks is like, we're just going to continue investing in these integrations. I think that's part of the kind of the power and the sweet spot of Fabric, right? Yeah. Every new thing in Fabric, we want to be a part of. So um, anything we can do to integrate and just make that a seamless experience is really our goal. Awesome. Great. Well, folks, uh, thanks, Dave, for, for joining us. Folks, thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, go ahead, give us a like, leave us a comment and let us know what integration you want to use today and what integration you're looking for tomorrow. Uh, we'll put some links in the description for you to learn more. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed.